Hello, my name is the Deuteron Doctor. Today I've come to you to talk about some Splatoon 3. In terms of what I tried to do with the 100 levels, I didn't realize they were going to change the leveling system, so I level way slower than I would in Splatoon 2 normally. And I just really can't do that. I don't think, I don't, I don't have the time. I haven't had a meaningful time out with anybody. I haven't talked to my family. I haven't talked to my friends, really, in about a month. And I just can't do it no more. But I will continue to do Splatoon videos from here on out. What I wanted to talk about is Splatoon 3 and its mechanics. So, the brellas. I main brellas. I'm sure my friends know this. I don't think any of you guys do. In Splatoon 3, with the given net code, I have no physical chance of making a difference on the battlefield with the Brellas. And I'm hoping that Nintendo watches this and fixes their net code because honestly, I don't know what I'll do if I can't get my Brellas back. Now, I can play a lot of other weapons. I can play the ink brush for some reason this time, which I wasn't able to do before. I can play blasters, I can play shooters, I can play splatling. I can play pretty much anything except for duelies. But I would like to main brellas again, and I, I have no, no possible way of doing that. One, given the current meta, which is range or speed, and two, given the current net code which is absolutely atrocious. I thought it was going to be an upgrade, and I think everyone in my friend group did too, but it is absolutely awful netcode. I'm getting communication errors, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we fixed it, we fixed it. You tried fixing it three times, nothing's changed. I still get a bunch of crap doo-doo for connection, but enough of the multiplayer for right now. I'll get back to that later. Let's talk about the story mode. Story mode, that's great. I'm fine with the story mode. I liked, and spoiler warning for anyone watching, but I liked the ending. Mr. Grizz ending, yeah. Oh my god, it's cliche. Oh my god, it's so easy to guess. I know, but it's still cool as hell. It's still a really, really cool ending. I love the sequence. I love just the storytelling of it. I like the Octo expansion kind of feel that it has. It's a much, much needed upgrade from the previous two games, but... There is a couple things that I do have gripes with the story mode. The biggest one being, actually, and I think this is going to be a surprise to all of you, considering how much I do like the idols, or did, I do not like how Deep Cut was implemented into the story mode. I love the boss fights. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely adore the boss fights. They're so good. They're so well designed. But I don't know if anyone else feels this sentiment, but it makes them all seem kind of like assholes. Because they kind of, they're kind of assholes in the beginning. They're like, oh, we're so much better than you. Oh my god, we're so much better. You should just give us the treasure. And then at the end of the game, they're like, oh, we were good guys the whole time. You can't do that. You can't. It's literally making the villain into your best friend in a show. When a show does that, it's the stupidest shit ever. Oh, never mind the fact that you tried to kill me 20 times. Not to be besties. But I liked the idols at the beginning, during the test fire. They were great. I liked them a lot. Now, I, I, I still like them, but I kind of tolerate them more now that I know what their character writing is like. Because their character writing doesn't really do them justice. It really does make them seem absolutely immature and rude and just awful. But overall, I'd say the story was very good. My other gripe is the fact that Octavio was introduced at the beginning fighting you. He was fighting you at the beginning of the game. And then this man is helping you at the end with no backstory to why he's helping you. Like, absolutely none. How does Octavio know where you are? How does he know you're in fucking space? How, do, how does he know that and save you at the right time? I haven't seen the dude for the whole damn campaign. How in the world does he just automatically help? Now, I get it. That scene is very hype. If you were watching the live stream, which the clip is gone now because, you know, YouTube can't record more than 12 hours at a time. It's stupid. But I was so hyped during that clip. It was so fun. I, I loved every second of it. But running through my head was, why is Octavio helping you? Because he just falls down after fighting us. So why don't I see him for the whole campaign? There's a lot of plot holes that don't make sense, especially the Octavio one. It's, it still makes no sense to me. 
that's my gripes with it. If I'm going to list the story modes, I'd say Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2, I'd say the campaign is kind of a 4 out of 10. And I'd say Splatoon 1 is probably a 6 out of 10. Splatoon 3, I have to say, is an 8 out of 10. And then Octo Expansion, I still think, is better with a 9 out of 10. Now, if we're talking hype, Splatoon 3 beats Octo Expansion by a long shot. But if we're talking base mechanics, how the story is told, what's going on, it leaves no plot holes behind. It leaves no no why behind it's just this is why here's how you fix it here's a plot twist here's the end that's it nice and simple but splatoon 3's campaign in terms of storytelling leaves way too many holes for me to feel okay giving it a higher score the missions are great it falls a lot of octo expansions rule sets but that that's the reason why i can't make it higher now back to the multiplayer Everyone's complaining right now, including me, that the multiplayer is way too fucking hard right now. Like, beyond hard. Like, we're constantly encountering sweats or disconnects. It's one or the other. But I've already talked about disconnects. Let's talk about the sweats. Same thing happened when we went from Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2. A bunch of the pro players got knocked down to where everyone else is because everyone's got to create whole new characters. And it was a bit of a mess for a while. It, it was like two weeks it took to figure it out the problem is yes we have a lot more pro players and we have a lot more new players but it shouldn't take what we're entering the second month of splatoon 3 and it's still not fixed i get it i'm a very good player so is my friend nate the editor hi nate it's just we aren't pro level we can't deal with that now i get that ranking i mean most of the super top tier pro players are already at like s plus 50 or whatnot and i think honestly it's pretty redundant to go above s plus 10 considering you go back down to s plus zero if you're over s plus 10 to begin with but whatever point is the super good pro players are already been filtered out the S plus 0 to S plus 9 people like me and Nate are right now being filtered out. I, I, I'd have to imagine because i I'd gotten to B plus rank. Um, I don't play it ranked very often, but, you know, I'm B plus rank. I, I don't know what rank Nate is. He can put it on the screen or whatnot. It's just it shouldn't have taken this long to filter out. I feel like instead of putting everybody at B minus, everyone who is above B minus or at B minus got put in B minus and I think yeah it's better than putting everyone at C minus but it's still bad you should put them at their respective ranks like I should have transferred from Splatoon 2 as an S plus 0 in everything and I should have gone in as an S plus 0 I feel like that would have been a much better balance S plus 50 to S plus 99 from Splatoon 2 yeah just bring it back to S plus 50 because that's the max in this game but it's still a problem that they still it doesn't negate the fact that they brought everybody down to B minus except for the like new players or the people that didn't play ranked it's bad for the community because the community is absolutely having a fit and uh, reasonably so because Nintendo decided hey let's have the save files affected but the problem is everybody got the same stuff like if you had a save file you got three gold tickets and you got in B minus that was it there was no other like incentive like if you were S plus zero and everything you didn't get four or if you were X rank and everything you didn't get like 10 and you weren't put in S plus 10 or whatnot you just were thrown in at B plus with three gold tickets just like everybody else and then they went here you figure it out have fun and so the pro players had a lot of fun because they won every single match on planet freaking earth yes that's rewarding the good players i understand that you should do that but should you reward the good players of splatoon for the detriment of the whole rest of the fan base because there's maybe about 50 super top level players there's about oh i don't know at least three million below that considering the first day of splatoon 3 japan sold 3.65 or something uh, over three million copies of splatoon 3 the first freaking day if that's the first freaking day splatoon has the chance to be on par with gta 5 and minecraft but if you have that many new players coming in you should not be punishing them 
for buying the game. It it's it doesn't make any sense for you to do that in the first place. It just it really doesn't. All in all, I, d I don't really think I have anything else to say other than that. So this is probably going to be a pretty short video, probably eight minutes or something. But anyways, overall score, Splatoon 1, I'll give a 5 out of 10. Splatoon 2, I think, deserves a 6 out of 10. And I think Splatoon 3 deserves a, a good 8 out of 10, only because it's done so much for the nitty-gritty, the movement options, the balancing. Everything's a lot more balanced, except for flings or rollers and fucking blasters. Oh my god, fucking nerf them. I'm the Drone Doctor, and I'll see you later. Bye.